Hey guys, so uh, I filmed a Sephora haul video on the first day of the Sephora sale when it was open for Rouge members and uh, now I have my Sephora VIB holiday savings event sale, whatever you want to call it, uh, haul to show you uh, right before the end of the sale. So uh, I hope I've kind of spaced them out and not kind of overwhelmed you, but I did want to uh, share with you what I've picked up uh, before the sale ends on Monday, I believe the 15th. Uh, so I was pretty restrained. Uh, I, I didn't go too crazy. Uh, I placed two orders on the Sephora website and then I placed one order for pickup in store because there were some items that were out of stock uh, on the Sephora website. Uh, and I will mention that I think I said in my last video that I wanted to get the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette and I didn't place my order right when the sale uh, began for me uh, as a rouge. Uh, I think I waited, I don't know, five days or something like that. So uh, by the time I got around to placing my order, that palette was sold out and is still sold out and uh, it's not even available for pick up at any of the Sephora stores near me. So uh, I figured, you know what, I'll just put that on my Christmas list. And if I get it, great. Um, I think it's a permanent product. And so it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So uh, yeah, so we'll see if I get that for Christmas. But uh, that was one thing I said I was thinking of picking up. Uh, another product I'm going to put on my uh, Christmas wish list is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. Uh, when I went in to um, pick up my Sephora order, I was able to kind of, you know, take a look at some of these palettes in person, do some swatching, that sort of thing. Uh, so I think I'm going to put that one on my Christmas list as well. To me, it reads a little bit more like true winter, early spring uh, in terms of the color story. So if I don't get it for Christmas, maybe I'll get it uh, at the spring VIB sale, whenever that is. Usually it's around my birthday in April, so that's always convenient. Yeah, so those were two kind of bigger ticket, I guess, sought after products that I kind of have my eye on, but I, I haven't purchased. But I did get one uh, palette that everyone has been kind of talking about, and that is the Natasha Denona Glam, uh, Glam Face Palette. And as everyone says, it's a huge fingerprint magnet. Uh, I got mine in the shade Light, so I think Natasha Denona was very smart in releasing this right before uh, the Sephora sale because everyone has that discount that they're eager to use and all the YouTubers want to go out and buy it to uh, film videos with and whatnot. So I use this today and I like it. Uh, I share a little bit more about my thoughts in depth in the demo portion. So I'm just going to kind of do an overview. Uh, I am wearing this on my face today, but if you want to see me actually apply it, uh, you can stay tuned for the demo. Yeah, so this is a really pretty palette. I, I'm not sure if I will reach for this kind of on a, you know, early morning going into work basis because I think, you know, the level of shine, it's really pretty. I mean, I don't know. It, it might just depend on my mood if I'm in the mood to be kind of extra shiny. But um, yeah, so that's a really pretty palette. Uh, it has a nice magnetic closure and everything. And I have the light version, I don't know if I said that. Uh, I don't know why, I guess the Glam palette, you can kind of see fingerprints on it, but I don't know why she was able to kind of, you know, do a different style of packaging for this one. I don't know if it's a different type of plastic. Uh, that little ND and everything is slightly raised. So hopefully that shouldn't be enough to kind of make storing it difficult or whatever. But yeah, it's very beautiful. Again, I'll talk a little bit more in depth as I apply it. Uh, so I got that. That was my kind of, I guess, biggest ticket uh, thing that I got. I also ordered the Makeup by Mario palette in, this is one of his older quads. This is in Bronzy Glam. And this was on sale uh, along with two other variations for $15 and then you get the additional uh, 20 I, well, I got the additional 20% on top of that. So I was just kind of curious about his eyeshadow formula. So I thought, you know, for like 12 bucks, basically, I would give this little quad a try. So I'll just quickly swatch these. The two middle shimmers are very nice.
So yeah, so I just thought, you know, again, for the price, like, I wouldn't mind um, picking that up. It's a good idea, I think, to kind of take a look at the sales section and see if there's anything um, that you've had your eye on and it happens to be on sale and then you get the discount on top of that. So don't go out and like waste money on stuff just because it happens to be on sale. But you know, if you've had your eye or you've been curious about something, it's a good, good time to pick it up. And then I also got this Rare Beauty Selena's Faves set. Uh, I think this was somewhere between 20 and $30, I think. Uh, so this is a four piece little set. It has a dewy liquid blush, a liquid luminizer, a matte lip cream, and a universal volumizing mascara. So uh, I am wearing the mascara and the lip out of this kit today so you can see me apply that. So I was curious about that lip formula and I think looking at the cost difference between buying one of these full size versus buying this kit wasn't huge. So I figured I might as well just get this little kit and try out like her mascara uh, that I know Samantha March has really enjoyed. And then um, these are really cute little blushes. I've gotten a couple shades of those now. Uh, so I can go ahead and swatch those for you. Uh, I got this little uh, shade in Bliss, which is a much kind of lighter peach color. And then the one that comes in the kit is Joy, which I thought was very appropriate for the holidays, Christmas anyway. Uh, it's quite, quite pigmented, so I might have to kind of be careful with that one. And then I also have this, uh, this was like a deluxe sample. I think this was in the shade, I want to say it was like Grace maybe, but I don't know. Uh, you might be able to tell just by the swatch. So that one is a much kind of mauvier color. There's that deluxe sample that I think is Grace. There's the Joy shade that comes in the kit and then Bliss. Yeah, so these are supposed to be Selena's favorite shades and obviously she is a different uh, skin tone than I am. So I wasn't totally sure that all of these would maybe work for me, but uh, you know, it's also good to kind of expand your collection and get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Uh, and then I also wanted to try her luminizer formula. So this is in the shade Mesmerize, and I think there might be like two shades below this. So, uh, that might, that might have a cast on me. I'm not sure. I'm not wearing this today. I'm wearing the one from the Natasha Denona. Uh, maybe I can get away with that. Blend it out. Uh, so I think I'm going to do a dedicated video just of that little kit. So if you want to see those shades, uh, obviously I'm wearing the lip, but the other the other shades in that kit on my complexion, then uh, stay tuned for that. It should be a fairly quick little video. Uh, I'm toying with the idea of doing some kind of vlogmas, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to commit to that or not. Uh, so anyway, so I got that and then with that one, I got two samples. Uh, when you use the code for the discount, you can't use any other kind of deluxe sample code. So you can just kind of select your normal little packet samples. Uh, I got another one of these Fenty sets. Uh, I might throw that in a giveaway. I think I showed you this in my previous Sephora haul. There wasn't anything that was like hugely exciting uh, at the time I was checking out. Uh, and then I also got the St. Jane Luxury Beauty Serum. Uh, this has CBD and 20 potent botanicals. Uh, I really like their style of packaging. I think that's really pretty. I don't really know much about this brand, but uh, it seemed kind of interesting. And uh, I actually did place two separate orders online. Uh, one I didn't apply the like sale discount to. I just used a normal kind of free gift with purchase type code. So I actually got two sets of those samples. I just picked the same ones. Uh, so speaking of that second order, uh, I got the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask in the Ginger Snap uh, scent that's new for holiday. Uh, and these, by the way, have this little kind of silicone spatula that I never end up using. Uh, so I have one of these. Uh, this is the kind of original berry flavor. I think this one, there's still some left, but I think, I think it's expired. So I think I'm going to toss that and just start using uh, this one. Uh, so I did use it today and 
scent wise to me it's it's not quite ginger snap it's not like spicy it smells more like graham cracker to me which i don't mind i like graham crackers i don't know if anyone else has uh, mentioned that or anything but um yeah i just i don't know i thought it would be kind of fun to get into the holiday spirit a little bit uh and then i got these patrick ta uh lashes uh, that he did with House of Lashes. Uh, these are in the It's a Look. And I think these were on sale. So I think they were like 18 maybe originally. They were marked down to nine. And then uh, these are actually a Sephora collection product apparently. So uh, I was able to get 30% off of these automatically. Uh, so I still got a bit of a discount on these even though I put in a different code. Uh, so the deluxe sample that I got is the new Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. And I say new because uh, they had um, released this in the past and I think they had to pull it and reformulate it because either there was an issue with the manufacturing or people were experiencing, I think, sensitivity to the like essential oils and stuff. So they've reformulated it. Uh, and I have tried the original, but I wanted to try this as well. Yeah, and it doesn't really smell like anything. It just kind of smells like lotion. So yeah, so I'm excited to use that. And you can get, I think, a mini or like a travel size of this for like $25 or whatever. But I figured uh, I would just try this little sample. This is uh, 10 grams or 0.35 ounces. And so this was free with a $25 purchase. So I figured getting this and foregoing the discount versus just buying the travel size, you know, I might as well just get that. Uh, there is another kind of deluxe mini I have my eye on and that is the Gucci mascara. Uh, that is free with a $35 purchase, I believe. So I don't know, I probably won't get it. Knowing me, I would probably use it once and then it would sit in a drawer or whatever, but. Uh, anyway, that was my little kind of online order. And then I did cave and get the Tower 28 uh, SPF mineral sunscreen in Fairfax. Uh, I do live in the Northern Virginia area outside of DC and Fairfax happens to be like the largest county in the area. Uh, so I don't know, I felt some kind of weird affinity towards this product and that name because of it. but. Uh, I think this is my true shade. This is the lightest shade and I think it does does match me quite well. So uh, yeah, you can see me apply this in the demo portion as well. But so far I I like it. It's very light coverage, but I like that on a, on a daily basis or whatever. And I think this will also be good for dry skin throughout the winter. Uh, I do have dry skin and I found it to be quite kind of moisturizing. Uh, so I did kind of go in and set it with powder and everything. but. Yeah, so far I'm enjoying that. I still have my eye on the Beauty Blender tint. Um, so, I don't know, I might pick that up at some point this winter, but I only need so many complexion products at once, right? Uh, and then I did get two more products in store. This is the Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. And I think this was one of those products where I saw Patrick Taw's um, like a video or masterclass he did um, and he made it look really good and I think I like the idea of a laminated brow. Uh, I'm not sure how well I actually like this product. I think I need to play around with it a little bit more. Uh, and I think it being kind of constantly sold out online and everything made me want to purchase it as well. Uh, I do want to do a full face of Patrick Ta at some point, and like I said, I was going to get that eyeshadow palette, but I'll just put that on my Christmas list because it's sold out anyway. And getting these lashes was kind of a way to get around buying the mascara, uh, but these look nice and they look, you know, when I do want to wear lashes, they look like ones that I will wear. And with mascaras, I'm pretty faithful to the Tarte Lights Camera Splashes, even though I keep, you know, trying out different mascaras and videos. So if Patrick Ta came out with a travel version of his mascara, I might try it, but paying full price for it just, you know, didn't really appeal to me. All right, and then the last product I have here is the Forever Mood Gingerbread Trap House Candle. Uh, I think I had seen this in store, uh, but I kind of decided to hold off for the sale. It looks like the 
the box was maybe a little damaged by someone opening it. Uh, so, uh, as you can tell from the Laneige um, lip mask, I, I do like gingerbread as kind of a holiday scent and there may be some, some gingerbread themed content coming at you this holiday season. Uh, so anyway, so I just wanted to pick up this little photo of a uh, very cute little guy. This was, I think, only like $14, and this is a 2.5 ounce size. So it says gingerbread trap house in gold foil, and it has the 4R on there. And I like this candle a lot, um, more than I thought I would actually, because, let's see, where are the notes? It says the top is marshmallow fluff, the heart is buttercream, cinnamon, and clove bark, and the base is vanilla bean, amber, cashmere, and cedar wood. So I am not a huge, um, like gourmand, like sweet candle type person. Uh, and I think a lot of other candles that she's released do seem to kind of fit into that gourmand category. Although I think I heard um, Michelle Wong talk about some, one of these candles and she said it was a little bit different or not quite as sweet as you would think. Uh, and I think at least smelling this cold, what really comes across to me is like the, the wood notes, which I really like. I do like a good fireside type candle from time to time. So I'm getting a lot of that, smelling it cold. I don't know when I burn it, if like the, the spice and the sweetness will come out more. Um, maybe the amber too I'm getting. But yeah, anyway, it's just, it's more up my, my street, as the British would say, um, than I thought it would be. So I'm happy to have that. And I think it was a good price and very cute. And uh, I'm happy to support Jackie Ina and um, try one of her candles. Uh, okay, so I think that is it for my overview. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty certain I'm not going to place another order before the sale ends. So I think this will be it for this um, Sephora holiday savings event season. But you never know. So I'll keep you updated on that. So uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll get into the demo portion. Okay, so first up, I'm going to start with this Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask in Gingerbread. So let's see how this... I think texture-wise, it feels just a tad thinner. I don't know if it's because it's new and I really have to kind of push in there. But even though it does say it is a lip sleeping mask, it is a pretty thin formula on the lips. All right, let's put the hair back. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the Glossier Future Dew just to make sure that my skin is kind of adequately moisturized. It's been a few hours since I did my skincare. And I do have dry skin. <laughs> you can see how pink it's getting as I'm rubbing it. Okay. And then I like to go in with my corrector next. So I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury corrector in the shade Fair. All right, so now for the base products. I'm using the Tower 28 Tinted Sunscreen. I don't think I applied sunscreen earlier because I had kind of a lazy day and I took a bath and, you know, I didn't go anywhere. I didn't really do a full skincare routine earlier. So uh, I have the shade Fairfax. So uh, I do like this kind of method of dispensing the product. It's a little liquidy. I thought with a tube like this, it would be uh, a bit thicker. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of dot it on half of my face. I believe this is the lightest shade. I think that's a good match. The, uh, the model they had looked very similar to me, I think, in skin tone. So I might wear this again tomorrow. Uh, we're actually going out for the day. So it's kind of nice to be able to test it just to make sure it's a good shade and see how kind of it applies and everything. Uh, before you commit to wearing it in public. Uh, I probably could have gone in without uh, a primer or anything like that. Like, 
<laughs> my skin almost looks glassy, which is interesting. Uh, it's not a ton of coverage, but I don't, I don't really want a ton of coverage uh, most of the time. Uh, we are going to be going back to the office one day a week, uh, at least to begin with, uh, starting in January. So uh, it's a good time to kind of start testing out more of these uh, kind of light coverage products, just easy kind of, you know, slap it on in the morning type things. Okay, so... I think I will set this. It does feel really nice just blending with the fingers though. I think I could use a brush. I don't think a sponge would really be necessary, but yeah, I think that's a nice kind of non-obvious product. I am still interested in that Beauty Blender uh, tint, but I'm not sure if I'm shade one or shade two. Uh, I quickly ran into Sephora when I was picking up my order and kind of did a you know quick circuit just to see um, if there was anything I absolutely needed to get or just you know be able to swatch or whatever. Uh, and I did swatch that, but I just you know didn't have the time to kind of really assess it. A little blemish down there. So I'm using the Lancome Tent Edol Concealer in the shade 90, which is uh, Ivoire Neutral. I saw Michelle Wong um, just upload a video today. And I think Britt Clark also did a dual sponsored Sephora and Tower 28 video, which is interesting that, you know, they've kind of gone that route in terms of um, combining uh, to sponsor a video. So I don't have anything against kind of sponsored videos or anything, but obviously they're not gonna say anything kind of hugely negative about a product if it's being sponsored. Uh, so it's just one of those kind of take it with a grain of salt sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, I think Michelle Wong and Britt Clark both say that they liked this Tower 28 product. So I'm excited to keep playing with that. All right, so this uh, Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. So, does it have instructions? Oh, this is interesting. It says, apply to clean, dry brows or after using the Major Brow Shaping Wax to preset brows in place. Uh, I do have the shaping wax that I got through Ipsy, but I'm just going to, I think, skip that step today. Uh, brush gel through the brows, being sure to fully coat each hair until product becomes tacky. Then press brows into place with the back of the applicator laminating them into their desired shape. Clean off excess gel from skin. So maybe it would have been better to do this uh, before I did any kind of base. I think when this first launched, just lean in a little bit, uh, I was not kind of very interested in it. I look a little crazy, I think. Okay, so that is the brow with the gel. I have to say, just looking at it, I don't know if, you know, kind of first time user error. Um, it does look a little kind of I guess like flaky. Which is not really a look you want in your brows. So this may need um, kind of some trial and error.
So it's interesting. So far, I'm not kind of over the moon about either of um, Patrick Ta's brow products. I felt like the wax didn't really give enough hold. And this one, I think the product itself is just too visible. And then I don't fill in my brows as you saw. Usually I use like a tinted brow gel. And I think because they're so pressed up, you know, maybe it's just the look, you know, that this product gives you. But you can kind of see those hairs. You can see kind of any, you know, inconsistencies in where the hair is growing a little bit better. And, you know, when you have a brow gel, like I like one that'll hold the brows in place because I tend to have kind of longer brow hairs, uh, but they're still kind of lying on top of each other a little bit more. So that just kind of helps, uh, helps them kind of camouflage any gaps or anything. So, and ironically, that was one of the products that is like continuously sold out and uh, that was one product that I had to pick up in store. All right, so going in with the Natasha Denona palette to apply this cream blush. So I have the light version and I think I'm gonna use this um, Zoeva Petite Stippling Brush and here, another Michelle Wong call out. <laughs> she just did a video with this product as well. I think she did both the uh, light and the dark. So from what I've seen, this isn't like a hugely pigmented uh, cream blush. So a stippling brush might not really be necessary. And you know, I can understand a lot of people complaining about a pigment level, although it is nice that she um, had two options to choose from. So that way the pigment level can be kind of tailored a little bit more. The thing about this though, um, I think you have to remember that with this form factor of having kind of an all-in-one palette where uh, you have a blush, a highlighter, and then eyeshadows, and these are kind of very neutral, friendly, everyday type shades. Uh, you're probably, I think the target audience for this is either someone who, you know, just wants to be able to kind of pick up the same palette every day and use it. Um, so either maybe a makeup novice or um, someone who just want something easy, you know? So I think having a less pigmented palette makes sense for, you know, if you just want to be able to grab one thing and not have to worry too much about uh, blending and, you know, over applying and that sort of thing, I think it makes sense to um, have something that's less pigmented. Uh, I think I saw maybe on Instagram that Natasha Denona had said something about her reasoning for creating this palette. But anyway, uh, okay, so I'm going to use the By Terry powder underneath my eyes. And this is a Suku cheek brush, actually. I have a couple different brushes that are this shape, so sometimes I just, whichever one I end up grabbing is the one I go with. And then for the face, I'm going to use the LYS Translucent Powder with this big uh, BK102 brush. I am interested in seeing how that blush applies over like a higher coverage uh, foundation, just to see kind of more of the actual color instead of you know, you see more of my kind of natural redness and everything coming through with this one. Um, I'm still pretty dewy. Okay, I think I might kick it up to <laughs> the Charlotte Tilbury powder. Same brush. This one is a tad bit more mattifying. So like I said, maybe next time I would forego the primer. 
And then going in with the Gucci bronzer in the shade one and my rougher number 22 brush. It's like my favorite bronzer blush combination. You can't really see. I think if you are my skin tone and you want kind of a nice cool toned bronzer for winter that will help, you know, give your face some dimension but not be too kind of orangey or whatever, this is a really good one. So uh, if, <laughs> if you're interested in picking this up, if it's in stock, I would definitely recommend um, going for it. Uh, I think that's it. I kind of skipped out on contour, but that's okay. Uh, okay, so let's let's do the eyes. All right, so going in with my Fenty eye primer, and then I'm gonna go back in with the by Terry just to kind of make sure that that is set. Okay, so I think I am going to. Okay, I'm gonna take the Sony G Classic Crease Brush and go into uh, the transition shade. One thing about this little plastic, I mean, it's good to have it and I'm glad it's in there, but it does kind of obscure the mirror a little bit. I guess I can have it flip down now if I'm not doing my blush. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a rougher number 23 brush and just use that same transition shade underneath. And then let's use the Let's see, mini booster from Sonia G in the crease shade. If I were just getting ready for work, I might go in with this crease shade, but I could probably just use the transition. I just want something super easy. Like I said, when you're trying to get out the door, no one wants to spend two hours blending. These died out. Okay, and let's see what this smoke shade does. So same brush. This is the darkest matte. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this, what's it called? This is the Jumbo Blender from Sony G. I'm gonna go into that transition shade again and just, ooh, that, apply it a little bit more. So you can see, like, if I had a, like, cream matte, that's kind of what I would normally use to kind of go over and blend and also to kind of set the primer. That transition shade applies just a tad dark on me to be kind of a really helpful like blender shade, but I can use like my setting powder. So it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's a nice shade to have for me, but I realized that like with a set of five eyeshadows, a shade that light may not be like super functional for everyone. Okay. Let's see how these shimmers do. So I'm gonna go in with my Shikuhodo GSN 9, and I'm gonna start with the inner corner shade and I like to kind of start with a brush just to kind of make sure I get the placement. I might wet this brush. Same brush going into the outer corner. Okay, so that's a really light kind of sparkly look. Going back into 
inner corner. So it's still not giving me like a ton of opacity. It's very pretty though. Okay, I think I, I managed to avoid a ton of fallout. I see a little bit underneath there. Ooh, I got a loose hair. All right, so I'm gonna take my finger and go into the inner corner shade and just see, okay, I feel, feel some fallout. So it's a really pretty effect. I think this might be just a tad bit kind of more than I would probably wear going into work on a daily basis. And probably a good idea to do your, your eyes first. It's very pretty though. I think, let's go into the highlighter. Uh, I think if you are new to Natasha Denona and you don't have any of her like midi palettes, so if you don't have uh, the glam, um, or even I take that back. Like if you, if you are new to Natasha Denona and, um, that's really pretty though. <laughs> I was going to say, if you just want to kind of try out the eye formula, I would recommend getting the, one of the minis that's like $25. You could even get two minis for this price. Uh, and those have some pretty kind of neutral colors. And I think the pans, I'm sure a lot of people have showed you this. Okay, so this is the mini glam palette. So these pans are smaller, but you know, when was the last time you used up a pan of eyeshadow? So you could get two of those and that would give you 10 shadows uh, or this I think is like $6 more, the Glam palette. And I believe these are the same size pans. Uh, so you would get 15 in this palette and you could create a variety of looks. So if you already have, you know, the midi palettes and the minis and all that, I would say this is a really fun palette to play around with. But if you are, I guess just looking to make your kind of dollar go the farthest, I would probably recommend going with the midi or a couple minis or even just one mini. Uh, but that is a very, very pretty look for sure. And I don't think that highlighter looks too dark on me. You can let me know what you think. Uh, okay, so if I had that Fenty Brown liquid liner, I'd probably use that. But as I don't, I'm going to use the Mario Eye Pencil, which is a really great one. Uh, and I might try to wing this out a tad. I'm just using a little Sigma E65 brush. I think I'm actually going to take, while I think of it, I'm gonna take that highlighter in the Natasha Denona palette and just pop some on the inner corner with this Ruffer number 26 brush. I still find it interesting that she included a cream blush and a powder highlighter. And then they're both under the same little plastic um, 
cover. I, I understand like practically that makes a lot of sense in terms of the design of the unit, but it's just an interesting way to go about it, I guess. Okay, so let's do uh, my Clinique Bottom Lash. And then I'm going to try out the Rare Beauty Mascara uh, and use the rougher lash curler. So, so it's interesting that this is kind of individually wrapped in plastic, which if you, I don't know, had multiple mascaras this size, uh, I guess it'd be a good way of like keeping track of which one you've used. I think Samantha March is a big fan of this mascara. Do you like this type of brush that's kind of, you know, natural? So it's pretty, it's very defining. So that's one coat. Okay, so that's one coat on each eye. And going in for a second. I think it is building and giving me a little bit more length, but it's still not like hugely volumizing. I'll try and give you the Okay, so so far I don't hate it. Uh, I don't absolutely love it, but we'll see kind of how that wears. Uh, I think I will be revisiting this kit, um, kind of doing a dedicated video to it. Uh, so, I think the only product I have left to try out is the lip. Uh, so, I think this will be okay with this eye look. I wasn't sure uh, what it would look like combined. Okay, so I think that kind of lip mask has mostly um, worn off. I don't know if I have any like super orangey red liners. Okay, I guess I'll just use this one from NYX in the shade uh, Plush Red. I haven't eaten dinner today yet, so we'll, we'll be able to tell, or at least I will, um, how well this kind of holds up. But this is in the shade Inspire. So I've been very curious about this formula. It has a very kind of soft matte Kind of moussey texture to it, which I guess is good because you have more control. It doesn't feel super drying. I would say this formula just off the bat though, it seems like it will be a good idea to kind of um, pay attention to the color of the lip liner because I, I think it took a little bit of work to kind of cover up the actual lip liner. I got a little bit on my teeth. I don't think this is going to do me any favors in terms of um, making my teeth look white, but it is very brightening though. Uh, I took another look at the shades in her uh, lip formula like this, and uh, this was really the only red option. So they didn't have like a cooler toned red. Um, I think there were like some berries and that sort of thing, but in terms of like a true red, you didn't have didn't have a lot of options with that. Okay, so again, I don't know if. I love the color of this lip. It might be a little bit more summery than like Christmas. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the base product and the Natasha Denona palette um, worked very well. The mascara was okay. Uh, I like the Laneige. Uh, the Patrick Ta, I think, still needs some kind of trial and error. And 
Is there anything else I tried out for you? I think that was it. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little demo portion and found it helpful. Uh, let me know if you like kind of longer videos with everything all in one, if you like just kind of seeing me apply things as I talk about them, like B-roll type footage. That's always one of the big questions in my head when I sit down to film a video is kind of how to structure it. So uh, if you have any feedback, like what you kind of like to see, then let me know. I'd be happy to um, consider it. Uh, I think the sale ends on the 15th. So uh, I hope if you were considering any of these products that this feedback kind of gave you some additional information to consider. So I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you soon. Bye.